Okay, so we just finished an overview of the book of Philippians. So when you're doing an overview, you pretty much just read through the book over and over and over again. But each time that you read through it, you're focused on a specific thing. And the best place to start is always to discover who the author is. And so um, as we did our overview, I hope that you were able to see that the author was Paul. So at the very beginning of Philippians, it says Paul and Timothy. But as you read through, you see that the pronouns are not in the plural. They are singular. And we know um, that it's Paul. We kind of pick up on that. And um, so then um, the next thing that you want to do is you want to read through it again and you want to look for the recipients. And then you want to read through it again and you want to look for any key repeated um, words, phrases. And then you want to read through it again and you want to mark every reference and occurrence of um, God, Jesus, um, the Holy Spirit. And so it's like kind of like after you get that that big picture overview then you can you start digging in a little deeper um, chapter by chapter and verse by verse so um, now let's just kind of go over what we learned in the in the in the overview of the book so um, we discovered that the author was Paul my dogs are barking and um, and so what did we learn about Paul so these are just some of the things that I saw about Paul um, as we um, as I did the overview so I saw that Paul um, was a bond servant of Christ that he offered his prayers with joy that he was confident in the power of Christ that um, he was imprisoned um, that he defends and confirms the gospel that he is a partaker of grace and that he says that God is his witness that he longs for the recipients with the affection of Christ. So we see that he's writing this group of um, people. He's writing this letter out of affection for the recipients. And um, we see that he prays for the saints. We see that he is in prison for the cause of Christ. So now we know why he is imprisoned. We see that he is appointed for the defense of the gospel. We see that he rejoices at the proclamation of the gospel. We see that for him to live is Christ and to die is gain. We see um, that he is hard pressed because he desires to leave the body and to um, be with Christ, but he knows that to stay is more beneficial for um, those that are here. So he's like to live is Christ and, and to die is gain. So he's like, I'm, I'm good either way. Um, so we see that he has suffered for the gospel and, um, we see that he is absent from the, the, the recipients of this letter. And we, we see that the recipients are the, the saints in Philippi. And so he is absent from the Philippians, but, um, but it looks like he has been present with them before. So it looks like he is writing a, a people, a church that he knows personally. Um, and so um, he also seems to feel confident that he might get to return to them at some point in time and see them again in person. We see that he is being poured out as a drink offering. So this kind of, to me, looks like it's like he's willingly He's willingly suffering for their sake. And we see that he is rejoicing and he's sharing his joy. And so he has joy in his imprisonment. And um, and we also saw that he placed no confidence in his flesh. Not who he once was. Um, not who he was born as. Not where he came from. Not what his previous knowledge was in this world. That all of his confidence is in his relationship with Christ. It's all about who he knows now, not who he used to know, but who he knows now. And so um, then moving on to our recipients, it's um, at the very beginning, we kind of see that the recipients, we don't kind of see, we do see that this letter is written to the saints in Philippi. 
and um, to the overseers and the deacons. And that's kind of included after. So it kind of lets us know that it is a letter that is being written to everyone, not just to the leaders of the church, but to everyone. And then it, and, but it includes the leaders of the church. Okay. And so we see that these people had participated in the gospel with Paul. We see that they are also partakers of grace. And we see that they have prayed for Paul. And we also see that they have had concern for Paul this whole time. But they went through a period to where they were not really able to do anything to help. But now that they can, they send help. So they, they couldn't before, but now they can. And so it looks like this letter is being written in response to the gift that they sent Paul. And we also kind of see as we look at them that they're they're facing their own suffering and their own persecution. And you know, Paul in his in his letter of thanks for their gift is also encouraging them. And so we can we see the theme of encouragement as we saw keywords and discovered keywords and phrases like joy, rejoice, and and having you know a particular type of attitude. And so those were like words that were repeated over and over throughout um, this letter. And um, and I also have went through and marked everything that we learned about Christ in that. But I'm not going to go over that in this video because we'll get in detail of that later. So um, I hope that you... Um, did the overview. I know sometimes it can seem redundant to read it over and over and over and over again, but you know what? The more you read it, the more you know it, the more you know it, the more it's committed to your heart and to your mind so that um, it goes with you wherever you go. So um, there you go. And we'll, um, the next, the next post will be as we focus in on chapter one of Philippians.